So hello, welcome back to part two of the electric skateboard build. In part one, we got the basics of the board ready to go. And in this part, we're gonna be integrating big batteries on the bottom and a headlight. And of course, we're gonna also be trying to ride to my university campus because this was the original goal of the project in general. In the end of the last video, I voiced my concerns about the size of the six amp hour batteries I bought. My biggest concern was with the clearance to the ground. I was scared the batteries were gonna scrape as I rode. To mitigate this, I tried to mount the batteries as close along the center line as possible. And I did this using new single battery holder. Once I had these mounted, it was time to do my first test ride to my university. Which was fairly uneventful until... So here I was doing a range test, I was going up a pretty steep hill, and I think I burned all the adhesive out of the motors because I could have badly they vibrate now. Still likely could be rideable, but uh, yeah, 30 degree heat and super steep hills turns out are not the best for these little motors. Yeah. So once I got home and took apart the motor, I figured out how it actually interfaced with the tire. So it interfaces through six small cap screws. So once these motors got heated up when I was going up the hill, they actually softened that outer tire and the cap screws dug into the tire material. Uh, also, the tires expanded on the hub, which was causing that horrible vibration noise. Now, the left tire wasn't as bad as the right tire, uh, and the motor was still usable, so I just ordered another motor, and in the meantime, started to work on the battery clearance problem. So I printed out some TPU and PLA spacers that would go in between the trucks and the board to give us a bit more clearance between the batteries and the pavement below. So these work to give me about another centimeter or so of clearance between the batteries and the pavement, which seemed to be enough. And once I was done with those, I got the replacement motor in the mail. So I went on and installed that. So the main reason I ended up buying these, again, was because they were cheap. A single motor was only listed at 40 Canadian dollars. So I figured even if I bought another one and it failed in the same way, I would have some motors I could use for other projects. So regardless, I went on and installed that onto the board. And then I went for a little ride. So here I was climbing a pretty steep hill and the board seemed to be pretty good still. Uh, eventually near the top, I didn't catch it on film, but we did slow down quite a bit, but uh, yeah, I was able to make it up the hill. So once I was back from that beautiful location, I decided to start work on the headlights. So the first step was figuring out a way to mount it to the board. So I decided that I was going to integrate it into the truck risers because I thought that was a pretty sleek way of doing it. And I started to iterate on a few different designs. Once I installed the riser with the light and I <laughs> fairly crudely wired up the light to a buck converter to take the 40 volts from the batteries down to 12 volts for the light, I taped the inverter to the bottom of the board and went for a little ride to see how effective the headlight would actually be.
pretty chill, but there's a sprinkler over there that makes scary noises. So hopefully I it doesn't turn into a Blair Witch video. Or something. Anyways. I was pretty happy with this performance. I felt like I could see pretty far while riding, and I decided it was time to head back home and start integrating the buck converter onto the bottom of the board more permanently. Now for this, I wanted to set up an automatic headlight system. So that is where we go next. So I printed out a case that would mount to the modular mounting mesh on the bottom of the board. And I began to integrate the main components. So that would be the main switch, the buck converter, the Arduino Nano, uh, a photoresistor, and a relay. So after mapping out the connections, uh, writing some code, and soldering up the circuit, I had a working on-off switch. So the switch was turned on and off basically depending on the amount of light that the sensor read. I was going to tune this once it was on the skateboard to uh, actually turn on and off at the right intensity of light. So the only other concern that I had was running the Arduino circuit off of 12 volts. I was pretty sure that the Arduino didn't have a good enough voltage regulator to power the relay and photo resistor at this voltage, but I wanted to give it a try anyways. But once I hooked up the circuit, it was pretty clear that the Arduino was not up to the task of converting this voltage down from 12 volts. As the Arduino was really quite hot to the touch, and the relay was not getting enough current to actually fire the coils. I remembered that I had an old 12 to 5 volt converter that I wanted to give a try just to see if I could get the voltage down to a point where the circuit would work. So I wired that up. So I just spent the better part of two hours hooking this up to the circuit. And this was supposed to step the 12 volts down to 5 volts for the Arduino to use so that I could power the relay properly. But <laughs> the second I hooked this up, it fried. Yeah, no idea why. Uh, let out the smoke. So, I don't have any more small step-down converters like this, but essentially the way that this was supposed to work is that this relay is supposed to be turned on and off based on the input from this photo resistor. But I can't really do that anymore, so now I'm just considering getting rid of the whole auto headlights in general, because I don't really want to have to wait for a photo resistor to come in the mail. Or not a photo resistor, a step-down converter. I'll let you know what I end up doing. So I ended up deciding to just remove the Arduino system for now. Um, I thought maybe in the future if I want to add it back, I could, but for now we'll just have it so that I turn the headlights on with a on-off switch. So now that I had the board in a semi-complete state, I decided it was time for another attempt at riding to my university campus. And here's what happened. So it was a pretty uneventful ride there, so I only really recorded this clip, but on the ride back, something else started to happen. I don't know if I'm gonna make it all the way home. I'll be honest with you. Um, we'll find out. I'll let you know. It's a good thing I brought my extra 1.3 amp hours of power as I'm getting up to some hill climbing parts, so we'll have to see. So I had to kick push there for a second. Uh, I think the batteries didn't have enough juice to get up a pretty steep hill. But that's really the only hill left, so we'll see. So I think there's a chance I'll make it. I'm barely having to put any electric power on. Yeah, I'm flashing, but also it's all downhill from here except for one small little uphill. So we'll have to see, see what we're going to be able to do. But I mean, right now I'm just coasting on gravity. Sweet! So, uh, yeah, we're pretty much dead now. I mean... It does still go, but I'm going extremely slow. So I'm going to throw on my 1.3 amp hour packs and uh, hopefully I can get home. So 1.3 amp hours on and uh, let's see if I can make it home with those.
battery when I'm using the motors but a lot of the time I'm not even using them because there just isn't uh, need to and I saw that little kick start from the six amp hours if I need it so wow a lot less vision than I thought we're gonna put it up to that headwind so clearly I was having a bit less range than I initially calculated now my theory was that the front wheels came with kind of lackluster bearings so I decided that I was going to replace these with some low friction bearings to improve the riding efficiency. So this was successful in reducing the rolling resistance on the front wheels because as you can see the new bearings on the left and the old bearings on the right here. So there's a lot less friction in the wheels. So finally, I had to work on that horrible vibration issue. Now, since this video is already getting pretty long, I'm gonna be putting that out in the next video where I'm gonna be using some 3D printed parts to actually improve the design of these motors. Uh, as well, I'm planning on actually taking these motors and putting them on my girlfriend's new skateboard. And then I'm gonna be buying some new higher end motors for mine. So I'll be integrating all that in the next video. So thanks for watching. Hopefully the next part is out sooner rather than later. Uh, my schedule has been a little crazy recently, but I should have some free time coming up. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.